Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Hassan Chowdhury and welcome to Bangladesh in Crisis. Throughout the series, we've been discussing in depth the crisis in Bangladesh. Tonight, we're discussing the international community and the judicial system. And with me in the studio, I have an expert panel of guests Nazrul Khasru, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum as salam. And you're a UK tribunals judge and expert in Bangladesh? Yes. Pleasure to have you with us. Nice to see you too. And Hamja Hassan, you're a campaigner on prison conditions and extradition? Yes. Assalamu alaikum yeah, Thank you for having me. Well. Thank you for having me. Okay. This week began with a massive protest in the capital, Bangladesh. Whilst a march proceeded there, a sister protest took place in London. On Sunday, Yasmin Khatun went along to find out what happened. Last Sunday, I went to a demonstration in Queensgate, London. People at the demo were angered by the actions of the current Bangladeshi government. The demonstration coincided with a much larger rally in Bangladesh. This can no longer continue. The regime of Hasina must step down. Yeah. Yeah. Must step down. What do you hope to achieve by coming out here today? Well, hopefully the aim is that people where we're here from the embassy today and they represent the people of Bangladesh. And we want to make it clear to them that people in the UK are, are one with the people of Bangladesh. The oppression that happened in there, we, as they are not, are not going to have it, we're not going to have it either. As they speak about, out against it, we will also speak out against it. Judgment Day! Judgment Day! Who is he? Let's hope what we see in Bangladesh today is the beginning of the Bangladeshi spring. Uh, many other parts of the Muslim world need a spring like the one that the Arab world is seeing at the moment. Uh, we have to change these uh, corrupt uh, regimes uh, that continue to serve the uh, uh, best interests of uh, a minority uh, and completely neglect the uh, uh, rights of the, uh, of the majority. As we were uh, turning left from the park uh, into this location, a brother uh, came and asked me, he said, are you tourists or you are with us? I said, I am with you 100%. Yes, I am with our brothers in Bangladesh 100%. Days later, I spoke to High Commissioner to Britain, Mohammed Mijarul Koyes, who dismissed the uprisings and claimed the government has the backing of its people. I can tell you that back home, we have a government um, which represents the people. In Bangladesh, we have a 90% of the population who are Muslims. This is a government that has been elected by that huge majority of whom are Muslims. It's a democratically elected government. And therefore, in terms of standing of the government, um, uh, I, I think the, 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 there is you know, absolutely no question of who represents and where they, they stand. He says the core root of the matter at hand is the International Crimes Tribunal, which has the backing of the British government. If you have followed the debates both in the House of Commons and in the House of Lords, you will see that the British government has reiterated its support for the crimes, for the trials of war crimes, the need to bring a closure to this, and upholding the rule of law. Are those in positions of power stranger to the feelings of their people? And if they are, how do you get them to relate? Yasmin Khatun, reporting for Islam Channel, Bangladesh in Crisis. And welcome back. So we saw in that report that there were people who were very anti-government, people who were concerned about what was going on. They didn't want to sit by and, and watch idly. And that's not just in Dhaka, but also in this country. Judge uh, Nazrul Khasru, um, your view on what's going on over there, people in support of the march, anti-government? Yes, um, uh, the march obviously relates to the war crime tribunal that is uh, taking place in Bangladesh. Now, as a matter of uh, principle, uh, it has been uh, praised uh, widely, universally, uh, and uh, the aim of uh, that tribunal is to bring an end to the uh, impunity the culture of impunity, and also to uh, achieve justice 
for uh, the victim's family. So to that extent, it has been uh, seen as a marvelous idea, and an idea for which uh, the current government has been congratulated. Now, then we have to look at uh, uh, what actually is happening as a, uh, 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 during the process of uh, that uh, war crime trial. Uh, before we that, just to say that Hefasut Islami, they've been out on the streets en masse, and as we saw that footage, there was a sister march, um, and this is obviously before we saw all of the uh, figures of the injuries that are going on. Um, your view of, of the violence that's been going on over there? Yes, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, is uh, indeed uh, very, very upsetting. And uh, one feels that that was totally unnecessary, unnecessary loss of life. Uh, th there was no attempt to negotiate with the demonstrators. Uh, there were no uh, attempts to, in fact, uh, uh, deal with the issues that they were raising. Uh, no serious consideration were given to their views. And uh, one feels uh, that uh, using such brute force in order to deal with uh, uh, ordinary people yes. who are exercising their uh, rights to, 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 to demand justice, to demand change, whether one agrees with them or not is uh, neither here nor there. Absolutely. But they have every right to do so. And that has been, in fact, curtailed in a brutal manner, and that cannot be accepted. Okay. Well, Hamza, you've been on many demos, many rallies. Um, the one out on Sunday had huge turnout, both uh, in Dhaka and also in, in London. Uh, what do you think of what's been going on? Um, the sort of energy that comes from uh, Bangladesh and also some of the uh, conflicts seem to just replicate themselves within London as well. You can almost mark a line within East London uh, where these, and even some of the alliances, which are strange to say the least. So you have these liberal arts community like Tamim Anam saying, you know, praise be to Nick Cohen, a, a sort of war. war, war. Sorry. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of people that were at the rally, different organizations, that's yeah. what you're saying, yeah? Yes. Okay. And do you feel that these kind of rallies are ever going to have an impact, an effect? Um, in the way any form of uh, international solidarity does, um, you know, we live in a more flat world with uh, YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and these hashtags like Taka Siege from London, they sort of do spread out and you, you, you can... Um, it's also safer within London to, to, to raise your voice and uh, against human but rights violations. Will it actually have an impact? Um, I mean, that's a wider issue, um, and, and that could apply to you know, does Palestinian solidarity have? Um, in some ways, yes, because you know we have Westminster models in in, in, in Bangladesh, and uh, you know a lot of the law is based on things trained here. So, um, having the Bar Association here and uh, other things. Um, does have a degree of authority, yes, um, and um, there's a certain level of impartiality, I guess, in, in Britain that you wouldn't get okay. in Bangladesh. Nazar, what do you think? Do you think it's possible to affect Bangladesh, especially when it comes to judicial issues against the government line from London? Uh, I, I, I think so, because uh, in, uh, uh, in England uh, we have uh, the largest number of uh, uh, Bangladesh is living outside of Bangladesh. That's one factor. And the, uh, the, the population here, Bangladeshi population here, that is, uh, is educated, is uh, quite objective in their views, and uh, therefore their ideas, their uh, wishes. Uh, must be it must be given due weight in Bangladesh, and uh, it's likely that it would be. They are able to see things from a, a different perspective, mm -hmm. uh, whereas in Bangladesh uh, it's not always possible to do so. So to, to that extent, it is uh, it is in fact uh, uh, a pleasing matter that uh, Bangladeshis have decided to come out yes. and uh, and uh, make their uh, presence felt their opinions heard, and that should do good, yes. Okay, so let me ask you about the, the indictment of Chowdhury Muin Uddin, uh, a British citizen, 
Um, there's a discussion about his indictment, extradition. What we're talking about here is charges of killing top intellectuals, being accused of being a war criminal. Um, do you think it's important that British citizens come out now? Uh, the, well, uh, as I said earlier, the, 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 the concept of the war crime tribunal is uh, one that uh, was overdue, in fact, and that has uh, arrived at last, and that has been applauded throughout the war. Whether this is achieving the right goal is uh, highly questionable. Whether it is, in fact, uh, 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 through a due process, through a fair process, identifying the uh, actual culprits and uh, convicting the actual cr uh, culprits, that remains highly questionable. Now, uh, in relation to uh, Chowdhury uh, uh, Moinuddin, I'll stop you there for a second. We're going to go to a report, actually, about this yeah, and, sure. and return to this. So before we continue the conversation, we have another report from earlier in the week. On May 2nd, British resident Chowdhury Moinuddin was indicted by the International Crimes Tribunal of Bangladesh. The trustee and former chair of Muslim Aid accused of killing 18 intellectuals during the Bangladeshi liberation struggle. In a statement, State Prosecutor Syed Haider Ali said, He has been indicted for crimes against humanity and genocide. The charges include the killing of the country's top intellectuals during the 1971 War of Liberation. Moinuddin denies all charges. To find out more, I spoke to his legal representative in London, Toby Cadman. The information that we have, uh, unfortunately, is only what we've picked up from the media. Uh, we were made aware that there was a hearing at the tribunal where, uh, this was before tr Tribunal 2, uh, where charges were confirmed by the judges and a summons issued. The matter is back before the tribunal on the 12th of May. Um, at which time they will then make a decision for further action. Um, at the same time, both the Foreign Minister and I believe the High Commissioner um, here in London had made statements that an extradition request has already been submitted um, even before the charges were confirmed. Um, that is worrying in itself, um, but we still have had no formal notification that the charges um, have been confirmed and we've had no formal confirmation of what those charges are. Not far from where I spoke to Kadman, High Commissioner to Bangladesh, Mijarul Koyes, had a very different opinion. Chaudhary Moinuddin, as per the courts, and I will defer, of course, to the tribunal to, to, to uh, decide on, on uh, his crime and the punishment that uh, it would Sayyid choose Adar to. Ali said that he no, no, was responsible for no, the death of Bangladeshi no, no. intellectuals. Now, Chaudhary Moinuddin, or any other person who was actively involved in the commissioning of these crimes, by being here in Britain, they pose a security threat to British society also. By being here, Chaudhary it gives you, it gives you, gives Britain a, a serious problem in terms of its reputation as being a safe Chaudhary haven. In a statement, the Home Office said, as a matter of long-standing policy and practice, the UK will neither confirm nor deny whether an extradition request has been made or received until such time as a person is arrested in relation to that request. And welcome back. So we were discussing Chowdhury Moonuddin and the report obviously went through that. Um